A very warm welcome to our Q1 FY21 earnings call. We will begin the call with opening remarks by Thierry Delaporte, our Chief Executive Officer and Managing Director, followed by business highlights and financial overview by our CFO Jatin Dalal. Afterwards, the operator will open the bridge for Q&A with our management team. Before Thierry starts, let me draw your attention to the fact that during this call, we may make certain forward-looking statements within the meaning of Private Securities Litigation Reform Act 1995. These statements are based on management's current expectations and are associated with uncertainties and risks, which may cause the actual results to differ materially from those expected. The uncertainties and risk factors are explained in our detailed filings with ACC. WIPRO does not undertake any obligation to update the forward-looking statements to reflect events and circumstances after the date of filing. The conference call will be archived and a transcript will be made available on our website. Over to you, Thierry. Thank you, Atana. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's, it's really wonderful to speak with all of you today. Uh, last Monday, I joined WePro as a Chief Executive Officer, and I'm excited to join WePro and consider it a great privilege to be asked to lead WePro such an exceptional global company with incredible legacy. I have known Wipro as one of the pioneering leaders in the industry, and over the years, I've come to greatly respect and admire the company, its values, its people, and its capabilities. Above all, the founder, chairman, Mr. Azim Premji's extraordinary leadership of this company for over 50 years, and his, you know, equally exceptional generosity is legendary. I have great respect for the work done by the Azim Premji Foundation for the underprivileged, uh, and it's it's today 67% economic ownership of Wipro adds greater meaning to what we do. I speak to you amidst a global pandemic which has few parallels in history. Safety of employees will be our paramount concern as we navigate these extraordinary times. The pandemic has brought about lasting changes in our ways of working. I've heard of remarkable stories from our customers, our partners, and colleagues on how we, on how we have adapted to the new demands of today and the indomitable spirit and dedication that we have shown in keeping our promise to customers and communities that we operate in. Over the last few, year, few weeks, I've been spending time, although only started a few days ago, I've been spending time over the last few weeks with senior leaders and teams across units and functions to take a holistic view of our business and better understand our opportunities and challenges. This is definitely a defining period for our industry and for Wipro. Disruption has always been a part of business. The challenges are new, but I know that Wipro with a long history of 75 years has overcome many challenges with tenacity and resilience. The culture of innovation fostered here over the ages will help us pivot and transform. Finally, I'd like to state that profitable growth is our most important agenda. Despite the immediate challenges, I have absolutely no doubt that we will emerge stronger. Over the next few weeks, working closely with Chairman Richard Premji and other senior leaders, I hope to finalize the plan to drive improvements across all spheres in our quest to achieve industry-leading growth. So I look forward to meet you in person next time with more details on our strategy and vision for the organization. Uh, with that, I hand it over to Jatin for his comments on the business performance and highlights for Q121. Jatin, thank, thank you very much, Thierry. Uh, good evening. Uh, it's great to talk to you all. You know, it has been a, a tremendous quarter for all of us. I can talk on behalf of Team Wipro. Uh, when we started the quarter, I think we had very, very little visibility as to what we are getting into. One of the toughest quarters as we started the journey. I will give you a brief 
a synopsis of what we have done in the course of the quarter and then we will take up the questions i want to cover this highlights in three parts number 1 is employee uh, safety and wellness second is on our financial performance and little bit on demand outlook and third is about an acquisition that we announced today so let me start very briefly about the way we have managed our operation we have continued to work extensively from home and at any point in time we don't have more than 4000 4500 people in our offices and we have been able to work seamlessly including delivering transitions in including delivering to complex development projects including meeting all slas as per uh, our requirements uh, from home uh, our teams have taken a greater onus on themselves to remain connected to make sure that we are available for each other uh, organization has um, has come out with you know initiatives like fit for life which are employee uh, health and wellness programs including um, some sort of counseling support when somebody needs uh, help and 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 somebody to talk to so that was on my first aspect second aspect let me talk about the financial performance as you know we delivered in a constant currency 7.5% decline and in a you know on a year on year basis we we declined about 4.4% in constant currency our performance on margin was very satisfactory we delivered an expansion of operating margin by 1.4 percentage points on a on a sequential basis and we delivered 0.60 uh, 0.60 basis point or 0.6 percent on a yoy basis if you see uh, we have also done very well on cash conversion which is the third metric we track very closely our our performance on our uh, operating cash flow was 127% of our ebitda and our uh, free cash flow was 157% of our net income as you know we had one month extra salary last quarter and you know we we had that benefit in quarter 1 but even if i take that away i think the team have done remarkable job to remain very cost conscious and cash conscious in a tough quarter i will go a little down in the pnl uh, you know we have a a a slight expansion of other income which was led by the larger corpus that we have of cash and we have about 4 billion dollars of cash compared to 3.4 that we had last quarter net of debt on our balance sheet our etr was slightly higher at 22.1% our net income was year on year uh, flat and our eps growth because we had a we, we had a, a buyback as you know in september last uh, last year our eps growth was 5.7% year on year overall we are quite happy with the way we came together and executed the quarter now let me talk little bit about the demand environment demand environment is driven by what we call as three c's the first is cloud second is collaboration and third is cyber we are also seeing great uptick in offerings like vdi sd wan excellent traction for for our digital operations and platform offerings uh, in this post covid era from from our sector standpoint while we have had a tough quarter one probably across all sectors but specifically we are seeing some stability returning in our consumer business unit uh in our tech business unit and uh, uh in our communication business unit for others we will we will watch it closely as to how how the traction unfolds during the course of uh quarter 2 overall from our perspective we started the quarter with with a certain trajectory but we we executed well on many fronts including on on revenue front to be able to come 
at the end where we came now let me talk little bit about the acquisition that we announced today it's a it's a it's the acquisitions acquisition is a smaller acquisition but it gives us a good access into northeast brazil it gives us access into the into new um, set of customers that we don't have in financial services retail public public sector and manufacturing services it's a profitable business which has been growing rapidly and above all um you know it provides us a great uh, opportunity in terms of uh, sourcing this talent which is very capable and very very cost competitive uh, for our global business overall uh, i think uh, team bipro came well, came uh, together quite well in quarter 1 uh, as i when i started i said that when we started we have very visibility visible low visibility as to what we are getting into but i think we stayed together and delivered a good quarter um, for our partners and shareholders so with that we are very happy to take your question thank you very much sir ladies and gentlemen we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touchstone telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue you may press star and 2 Participants are requested to use handset while asking questions Ladies and gentlemen we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles To ask a question please press star and 1 The first question is from the line of Sudhir Guntapalli from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for giving me the opportunity. So, margin performance during the quarter, especially at gross margin level, was uh, very impressive. In fact, it was better than even uh, pre-COVID quarters. So, what is your thought process on the sustainability of this uh, cost structure or uh, margin level? So, you look at it more like a one-time spike uh, due to aggressive cost control, or you think? Uh, this would be something which is sustainable going forward. So, Dr. Uh, thanks for your question. Uh, you know, we, uh, you know, let me give you a little bit more color. I, I think, uh, you know, there are three components to our margin expansion for quarter one. One is the operation, which is nearly one percent, where we, uh, you know, really went after um, the traditional levers. Uh, we managed our uh, uh, managed to utilize our people very well. We really had a had a look at our variable workforce. Um, uh, we uh, looked at uh, uh, you know you have seen utilization improving, you have seen offshore rate uh, improving. Uh, overall, I think uh, and of course there, there is a component on automation which is not visible to to externally uh, that has also played up. so overall i think we we did a very good job in terms of managing our workforce to our requirement uh, in an environment where revenue were highly uncertain so that was one one component uh, second is we of course kept a very tight watch of every incremental spend that we have to do we also looked at existing spend and whether they were giving us the buck uh, uh, the bank for the buck as they were giving us in pre covid times then if they were not then we have really looked at them whether those spend should continue uh, so that was of three 1% another 1% is has been uh, forex and we had taken we have taken a slightly larger provision for doubtful debt which is more called as a expected uh, credit loss uh, which which is driven by environment and not by a specific situation or specific uh customer or 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 uh, or any any specificity for that matter uh, which is about 0.5 so that is about 1.4 1.1.4% you know sequential expansion that we have done and as you can see i think we have done well on operations um and therefore we believe that we should be able to keep our operating margin in a narrow band in quarter 2 uh, also having said that as theory articulated uh in his opening remarks 
you know, our our focus remains growth as an organization, profitable growth that we want to go after. And therefore, if we need to make investments, we will make those investments, and that will always be our first priority. Um, and subject to that, yes, we will try and keep it in mind. Thanks, Chetan, for that. And in healthcare vertical, uh, some of the large companies had actually reported very strong growth in this vertical, uh, led by work related to contact tracing applications, etc. However, we did not seem uh, to have gotten a similar benefit. Uh, is this due to difference in our service offerings in the healthcare vertical? Uh, and broadly, your thoughts on vertical-wise outlook uh, across other verticals also will be very helpful. Yes, yeah, so I will uh, start with first. Uh, I, I will start with the second part of the question, and I would uh, request Bill to take the first part. Bill Steve is our global head of health, BU. Uh, so we have shared that uh, we do believe that uh, we are seeing. Uh, more stability in in CBU uh, technology and and communication in terms of the where it can be in quarter two. Other BUs we also see overall stability, but other BUs we will wait and watch uh, how the environment uh, sort of progresses. So that's the, the the sort of commentary on other BUs, and I'll now request Bill to uh, to respond on health. Yes, thank you. Um, so first of all, uh, let me just uh, remind uh, that you know Q4 for us is a high volume seasonal business, with um, especially in our payer segment for open enrollment. Um, so we typically expect a little bit of pressure coming into Q1. Obviously, that was um, expanded due to COVID, where we saw mostly volumes uh, dropping due to um, patients pushing out their elective treatments, which also translated into uh, furloughs uh, in our pay and provider segment. Um, medical device and life sciences will also have impacted on volumes based on uh, based on in, inbound calls associated with the same procedures. Um, I would say that our pipeline is strong. Um, we won uh, new deals uh, both in existing and new logos, um, and uh, and we further expanded enabling our clients, especially in BDI and cloud, as mentioned. Um, and we do, uh, um, we do, we saw a lot of demand for delivery in our near shore locations of, uh, the Philippines. Um, we, we are watching elections. Obviously, uh, as you know, that could have an impact, especially on our, um, ACA, uh, exchanges in the U.S. Sure. Thanks and all the best. Sure. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Kavaljeet Saluja from Kotak. Please go ahead. Kavaljeet Saluja, your line is unmuted. You may go ahead with the question. Hey, hi. Uh, uh, you know, congratulations on uh, extremely strong uh, margin performance. Uh, you know, I joined the call a little bit late, so I don't know if uh, Thierry is uh, taking any questions. Uh, but if he is, uh, you know, I have a first question for him. Yes, okay. I am. I am. Okay. So, Thierry, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, welcome on board. Uh, the first question that I had uh, uh, was that, you know, what will be your first 90 or 120 day plan uh, as you go about, uh, 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 you know, getting Wipro uh, back uh, to the growth uh, uh, path or getting back uh, to the industry growth level? So, what will be your uh, key priorities for the first uh, 90 or 120 days? Okay. Understood. Okay. So, first, first of all, uh, I must confess one thing. I've been a little bit cheating with the uh, concept of first day because I've definitely been uh, working before my first day uh, uh, last Monday. And so I've dedicated uh, the last three, four weeks, four, five weeks, actually, connecting with, you know, the leadership team, connecting with our chairman, uh, Richard, connecting with the board members and so on. So, you know, I've already had a, a good time to really get a flavor for um, the business, the clients, um, you know, our employees, better understand the power and the strengths of our culture, of our values, and so on. Having said that, obviously, uh, uh, you know, uh, starting now, 
looking at the priorities for, as you say, the first 90 or 100 days, you know, I look at it in uh, different uh, buckets. On the first one, which is the operations, I'm someone who likes to jump and dive into the trenches day one. And so it's literally starting to engage with, you know, our leaders uh, in the operations every day and and really be active on uh, the day-to-day operations. We have, uh, you know, uh, a, a quarter to, uh, to deliver, a quarter three, and there's a great sense of attention paid to how we will be uh, dealing with the, the health and the safety of our employees. So that is really specific to the current situation where we are in, but also to the fact that, you know, it's actually day-to-day operations for us. Yes, the world has changed. Uh, so does uh, so, so, so does our uh, the, the, the way our day-to-day operations look like as well. Uh, the second aspect for me is connecting. So connecting with our clients. I've really started to engage basically on day one, and I'm spending time with clients um, to listen to them, to meet them, to understand what we are doing and how, you know, what their expectations are. So this is also incredibly important uh, because, um, you know, I see, you know, I I have great passion for clients, great passion for, um, you know, spending time with them and, and, and building partnership with them. And equally important, as you can imagine, is really connecting with our employees. So I've also started to engage, and we'll do a lot more of that. You know, I'm, I'm a people person, so I like to connect, you know, physically, but, you know, it's okay. In the current environment, obviously, I need to accept. We all accept the situation. It may last. Um, so we are using the new uh, uh, technologies to really connect. And actually, it's working well. You can connect with people from different places at the same time. You can jump from one country to another in a few seconds, and I've been connecting and will connect more with uh, different parts, different groups, you know, senior leadership, young um, professionals, um, uh, women at WePro, uh, best talents, and so on and so on. And then, obviously, while we are doing so, we is constantly an emphasis on you know, let's grow, and the, and the appetite for deals and clients. I will work on you know the the, the bigger plan uh, to redefine or to confirm our strategy, our vision, our ambition for for the years to come, and where I can potentially contribute to accelerate the growth, to uh, build a co- cohesive team, and continue to grow top talent, to constantly challenge status quo inside the organization and see where we can be more nimble, more efficient, more productive, have less time uh, internal, more time for our clients and for our employees. And finally, how we can streamline our processes and so on. So to respond rapidly to your question now, I would say, it's going to be a good balance between, um, you know, the need to dive into the operations, uh, you know, and protect the safety and security of our people, and at the same time work on a bigger plan. I don't want to jump on conclusions now. It's only day seven, but work on a bigger cla- cla- plan that I will come and share with you at some point in time. Right. Uh, just a follow-on uh, uh, question, uh, uh, Thierry. Uh, uh, and on a slightly different note, while it's early days, uh, you know, what do you think uh, uh, you know Wipro could have done better? Now, of course, it's only seven days for you, uh, you know, at uh, Wipro, but you have come across Wipro as a competitor while you were at uh, CAP. So, what are your you know broad early thoughts you can share? Uh, you know, that we yeah. I can tell you one thing. This is exactly what I will not do. Uh, jump at conclusions and compare with, you know, 
uh, Cap Gemini. I, I, I don't want to do that at all because I don't think it's uh, right after seven days, and I don't think it leads to anything. I think it, I still need to learn and listen and and observe and, and and better and get a better feel. There will be a point in time I will start to draw conclusions. What what is clear is that you know uh, the, the 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 values of Wipro are completely unique. Uh, the sense of purpose of Wipro is completely unique. Um, this is a global company. As you said, I've known Wipro for, you know, for 20 years. I've, I've been competing with Wipro uh, for 20 years. Won sometimes, lost sometimes. But truly formidable competitor. And, you know, what, what I would say after seven days is, yes, it's a global company with an even bigger heart than what I thought before, uh, the energy in the system, the passion of the employees for the company, uh, the love they have of Wipro is, uh, uh, for me, uh, outstanding, and I want to build on that uh, in, 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 the, in the years to come. That's very well put. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm just being a little bit selfish, and I'll ask just one more question to get in, uh, so please don't mind. Uh, you know, uh, Jatin, uh, just a question on the margin. Uh, I'm still trying to understand, uh, you know, what drove the margin improvement uh, given that your employee headcount decline was barely 1%. Your utilization went up. So effectively, your volume was flat, yet the revenue declined by 7%. So is the, with the 7% realization decline, I'm still trying to reconcile as to how you were able to manage your profitability. And second is that and I also saw that uh, the employee cost on dollar basis declined by 9% on a quarter-on-quarter -quarter basis, which means that you have leveraged the uh, variable compensation uh, uh, lever uh, quite aggressively. So I just wanted uh, your thoughts on a couple of these aspects. Uh, yeah, sure. I will speak about the first, uh, and I will also invite Saurabh to talk about the second one. Uh, so, Kavaljit, uh, there are there are parts of uh, of that walk which are unfortunately not visible externally. Uh, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, we have looked at very aggressively the variable workforce of Wipro beginning from day one of the quarter. So we were able to leverage a lot of internal talent that that actually uh, was. Uh, utilize that is number one instead of a variable talent second is uh, that in in some form you know utilization is also factor of leave loss and leave loss have, as you can imagine has been relatively lower for the quarter and uh, uh, of course that also plays into revenue but that is one of the things which has kept utilization uh, to come out even better than what it was in quarter four and your third point on realization, I I, I would say that the entire 7% drop is definitely not the realization drop. Uh, there is a part which is realization, and there is certainly a part which is volumes. And as uh, you would also appreciate that in a time like this, uh, no company will have zero volume uh, decline. So we also have had a share of our volume decline, and there is a vo there is a part which is also realization. I want to talk uh, a little a bit on realization also. Realization typically has has a few components. As you know, that uh, one direct component could be price discount. The second, in, uh, but I will come on, on to it at the, the end, but in a business which is run at 60% plus fixed price project, uh, there is, uh, there are impact on, uh, um, on uh, realization because of the element-based contracts that we have uh, in our infrastructure business where we are paid based on the elements that we are able to service. And you would appreciate that when elements go down, when, for example, a large manufacturing firm is not operating its plant, there, there would be a dip in the elements which are serviced by Wipro. But I cannot overnight reduce the staff from those projects because they are all doing some specific work, some serving specific elements, or deployed for a specific technology. So element-based contract has flown into it. Two, there is always uh, a certain amount of change requests, uh, additional business 
that flows into existing fixed price business uh, which has impact on realization this quarter it has had an adverse impact because because there was a sort of at least in the beginning of the quarter as you can imagine a lot of decision making was on pause so fixed price project has got impacted by that of course there has been an impact on pricing also but i would say that has been relatively smaller and i am confident that the variable part of the realization of fixed price project we should see an uptick as the environment becomes to normalcy during the course of uh, next couple of quarters on uh, variable pay i would say uh, uh, i would request saurabh to talk about it but i would i would uh, uh, i would only uh, make one comment that our operational savings has been significant in terms of uh, the value and in terms of the might of execution uh, or compared to the leverage of a variable pay uh, saurabh you want to add something to that thanks sir so come uh, exactly the when we got into this entire thing about uh, in q1 you know when the pandemic started and we were looking at revenue impact and costs uh, one of the things we had called out and which we try to do as far as possible was that we will minimize letting go people given that there is a significant volume drop uh, how and that collectively the might of the project come together in this time like in the previous year for most of our people we had uh, given 100% variable pay which was paid to them the q4 was 100% variable pay which was paid to all our employees in the middle of uh, the entire pandemic in the month of may uh, the leadership took a bigger cut but majority of the people have uh, got reasonable variable pay so as that in said it has been a superior execution across all cost parameters rather than looking at one specific area okay thank you so much and uh, wish you the best thank you very much the next question is from the line of rishit parik from namura please go ahead uh hi thanks for taking my question and very welcome on board uh just uh if i if we look at the outlook for some of the peers they started to talk about sequential improvement in 2q right uh wanted to understand what are we seeing from a demand perspective and when do we see recovery coming through uh that's one and on the deal discussion side how the traction is improving across clients uh, and if you can just give a little more color on what it is perspective that be helpful thank you yes so uh you know we have said that we see stability in in quarter 2 uh however you know that the situation is very fluid so it is really i would say not in our place to uh to say that you know this is the definitiveness that we see in the environment but we certainly see uh, we certainly have much greater visibility than we had in the beginning of quarter 1 uh but having said that it's an it's an evolving environment uh, both from demand side uh, from from in you know our largest market is united states as well as uh, on uh, supply side where our largest delivery centers are in india so i don't think uh, we are in a position to uh, to to very uh, you know accurately predict what's going to pan out we will play it by the year but we certainly see a, a greater uh, stability in the current quarter uh, compared to q1 Uh, second uh, you know from a environment standpoint we certainly believe that we should see uh, we should see an uptick in performance uh, in the bus that i mentioned uh, sbu tech communication uh, health also should should hopefully do better because some of the elective uh, surgeries etc which got pushed out probably they will come back some of the volumes related to that could come back uh, and rest we will will play it by the year in in the course of quarter 2 which is Okay, and just one last question from a BFSI standpoint. The weakness seems to be slightly more, uh, but our presence is is fairly decent, right, in that space. So, just wanted to understand what are you seeing from a BFSI perspective, uh, because some of the competition is starting to see improvement in 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 that portion, at least from the two Q onwards. Yeah, Elisha, uh, yeah. this is Elisha. This is Angan. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
So, Rishit, uh, this is Ahmed, and I lead uh, financial services globally. So, let me give you a little bit of a color from a BFSI standpoint. So, Richard, as you know, you know most of the banks uh, have got into this cycle with a pretty robust balance sheet, right? Because uh, no, none of the banks wanted to be in the same situation uh, as they were due to the uh, global financial crisis. Uh, so, obviously, everybody is showing a balance sheet uh, strength, uh, and what that has done is uh, that has uh, you know made the banks spend a lot lower than what uh, they were spending earlier. Uh, that, so, that is one. There are two big uncertainties, specifically with the unemployment at the rate it is, and U.S., like uh, Japan mentioned, being our biggest market. Uh, people are worried about delinquencies. That is one. And second, with almost a zero interest rate or could even be negative, uh, you know, from, from, a, from a bank's as well as uh, the financial institution's perspective, they're very careful uh, in terms of the uncertainties. And you would have seen the Gartner report. The Gartner, Gartner has clearly stated that there will be a 4% decline in terms of the spending. Uh, but that said, uh, there are also some green shoots. So we have seen a lot of uh, discussions around uh, the run side of the bank, where people are spending to cut costs, and we are participating very, very heavily in that part of the area. Uh, but the things are uncertain. So, you know, we will play it by the year. We will see how it goes. Uh, from a from a uh, discounting perspective, I think we've uh, we've done a good job in terms of Q1. Uh, but as things become more clearer, we will be able to be, uh, give a much better commentary at, at this stage. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Shah from CIMB. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks very much. And more theory. Uh, my first question is uh, to theory. Uh, just to understand, as you have said uh, in your speech, as well as in the press release, that your agenda is on profitable growth. And uh, you will also agree that Wipro has been lagging the industry growth rate. While peers who have faced the similar situations have actually, in an initial strategy, has compromised the margin to get the growth turnaround as a whole, while one of the peers wanted to do both hand-in-hand hand and was not able to do it successfully. So do you believe a profitable growth and a growth turnaround uh, going hand-in-hand hand could be like a catch-22 situation and maybe a difficult task where you have to first compromise a bit of a margin to get the growth turnaround? So your plan and strategy around this thing. Okay, so so yeah, it's a it's a very fair question. Uh, you know, in my end, so I'll be a little bit academic because I think that, you know, as you can imagine, uh, with the, uh, uh, you know, seven days under my belt, it's you know, it, it's it's this kind of answers require you know specific to the situation of every business. But let's be clear on my priorities. I have the I will drive an obsession for growth in the organization. Obsession for growth, for growing our top line everywhere. But I I mention profitable growth because I don't believe that you can, you know, n negotiate one for the other. There's a possibility that maybe one quarter or two, you know, you get more of one and less of the other. This, you know, can always happen, but on a long term, you need to drive both growth and profitability. And we can do it. Uh, uh, we can do it. Um, growth, it starts with growth. That's also one important point. You know, you, you can uh, drive profitability through cost reduction quarter after quarter, but it's very difficult to drive growth uh, if you're not investing. And it's your, your, your point on catch-22. Uh, so it starts with growth, okay? My view is that to drive growth, it's going to be about uh, certainly high energy, absolute focus on that, um, ready to focus the, our, the investments to uh, the accounts that matter to us, to the, you know, leveraging the offerings where we have strengths and the industries and the position we have in our industry. 
Uh, it will take to take some bets, and we will take some bets, and we will be bold in uh, going after these bets. Uh, but the focus will be on growth, not to the expense of profit. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Thanks. And the second question to Japan, uh, just about the margin savings which you would have done. Uh, this is also helped by work from home and the lockdown. But as the growth comes back, uh, what percentage of savings which you have achieved in 1Q and may be possible because of a full quarter impact in 2Q, uh, would you retain uh, when the growth comes back uh, in a normal situation when the uh, lockdown situation is much more uh, normal versus where it is right now? Yes, so so certainly there are certain expenses which will come back. Uh, like, for example, we are at a historically low uh, value of travel, as you can see in car financial, uh, and that would come back as as you, you climb back uh, on activity. Uh, there would be, but at the same time, there would be certain expenses that we have had benefit for, for let's say, half the quarter or one-third of the quarter, in quarter one, that will give its full benefit uh, in quarter two. So there are some positive levers also there. Um, the expenses that will come back with uh, increase in activity, uh, our endeavor would be that are commensurate with the additional opportunities and growth that we are seeing. Uh, so in some form, you should get a lever from growth uh, on those expenses. But uh, But overall, we see that we should be able to focus our energies in second quarter also on what we can do. We remain focused on cost. Uh, just, uh, you know, it's not a one quarter journey. Uh, we will continue to question all the incremental spend that, that are needed. Uh, and we have to be very uh, clear, uh, uh, Sandeep, that, you know, we have built a model for a different um, time and place, uh, the operating model that was operating. Uh, and if we are not conscious of, of looking at every cost item and asking whether in the new world this is also required or not required, then we are not doing justice to that cost. So we will continue to look at, uh, you know, areas that we couldn't focus in quarter one, in quarter two also. So I would really put it in three buckets, you know, the cost that will go up, the cost which will give it full benefits, and also the third bucket with the cost that we have not been able to look at in a short term, can we look at it now? Uh, so those are the cost plays, and therefore I made a comment to Sudhir's question that you know we'll try and keep it in a narrow band, uh, uh, of course subject to the investments that we need to make, and I think there we can't compromise. And what we need to to invest for growth, uh, we have announced one acquisition. If we have to do, uh, you know, we have to remain focused on on strategic assets that we want to add, that could also be dilutive. So those investments we will remain very open. Uh, but cost side, we will we'll try and look at continue to remain as close as possible to the to the uh, to to line of uh, execution. Okay. Thanks, thanks, and all the best to the management. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Abhishek Shindatkar from Ilara Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, you know, a part of the question was answered earlier, but uh, would like to understand, uh, you know, how did the demand uh, or the, you know, um, deal bookings played out in June versus May and April? Uh, any commentary or color in terms of the progression could be helpful. Thank you. I'll request Vanu Murthy, our Chief Operating Officer, to. Hi. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, in terms of the order book, uh, you know, what we have seen is that during the latter half of the quarter, we see the, the deal momentum pick up. Our uh, pipeline continue to remain very healthy. And you have seen that, you know, we also announced a uh, couple of good deals uh, in our press release itself. And uh, what we are seeing is that the, the velocity of decision making is still not at the pre-COVID levels. However, our order book remains healthy. It has improved year on year, and our pipeline uh, is robust. 
We're also seeing that in terms of demand, the nature of services that we are seeing, definitely we are seeing a good pipeline for uh, uh, our offerings on cloud, uh, ensuring that employee, our customer employees are able to work from home and remotely, uh, some of the infrastructure services, and our uh, our uh, digital operations and platform services. That we're seeing a good momentum in these services, along with our engineering and security services as well. So, so we do see a good momentum uh, on the order book side, uh, and uh, you know our our uh, pipeline looks uh, robust and healthy. Uh, thank you. Just a clarification. You said uh, the book is, uh, you know, has increased year on year. Uh, if you can also compare it to March or pre-COVID levels, that would be helpful. Thank you for taking my question. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like we discussed, we don't we don't disclose the uh, uh, individual uh, size of the order book and the uh, uh, or the PCV levels, but I can tell you that the the order book has uh, improved year on year uh, uh, comparatively. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. The next question is from the line of Divya Nagarajan from UBS. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks and congrats on the strong execution in a tough quarter. Uh, most of my questions have been answered, so I'm just going to ask Thierry a question more on a sector perspective, if I may. Thierry, in your experience on the services space and specifically in the last few years, the changes that we're seeing in the IT services landscape, what would you think are the key trends that you think are going to accelerate because of what we're seeing in this downturn? And uh, specifically, what is your, what's, what has been your impression of the offshore sector as a whole in the last five years and how the sector has handled this transformation to digital? Okay, thanks for, for the question. So, so yeah, the, the, you know, I think we all recognize that the, we are in an industry where the reality of the day is not the reality of the day after. So things are changing rapidly. What, what, you know, a couple of trends. Uh, one, we all agree on the fact that technology is more pervasive inside the organization, that every company is investing in technology. And therefore, you know, enabling technology to address business issues. Uh, what we've seen over the years, over the last years, is that there is a growing component of of this technology spend that is being done outside, or not not say outside, but that is being driven by the business. And it's not only uh, triggered, if you like, by the IT departments. Uh, chief marketing officer are spending in technology. Chief you know, sales officer, head of operations, head of manufacturing, uh, head of uh, supply chain, um, different function leaders are spending in technology. And therefore, it's an evolution. You know, we need to adapt and, 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 and obviously be the uh, force of connection inside the companies between the business and the IT. IT is always required, absolutely essential to drive scale and security to all these investments and uh, orchestrate, if you like, those uh, 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 the investment on those technologies. But I think it's clear that, you know, we have to be prepared to connect with CXOs uh, and very different stakeholders inside companies to engage on uh, strategic discussions where technology can play a role. Uh, take a second, I think, you know, it's very clear that, um, uh, you know, the company that have not invested enough in their uh, digital transformation over the last years, I felt the pain uh, during uh, the crisis of the last weeks. And there will be an acceleration of their transformation over the next uh, quarters, the level of adoption of cloud in the different markets is going to accelerate tremendously. Uh, and n without, you know, not even talking about the potential of, you know, 5G uh, uh, for a lot of the technologies that we are uh, talking about. So I think, you know, I would say that you know, the winners in, our, in the industry will be the one who have been able to adapt and shift 
the fastest to the evolution of this demand and 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 be able to you know come on one side and work with the clients the partners to drive efficiency simplify organizations uh, reduce the cost of running operations and so on and on the other side reinvest at least part of these savings to you know uh, 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 new technology and new uh, ways of working uh, cre- helping creation of uh, uh, new revenue streams uh, uh, through innovation and technology. Uh, so it's going to be about being able to adjust, being able to accelerate and stay c- as close as possible to our customers and here and, and get a, a, a deep understanding of the challenges of each industry and be able to respond to it. Services need to be sector specific to address those those needs, uh, uh, those those requirements from our clients. Mm, thanks for that. Uh, Jatin, my question to your earlier comment that you have brought down your temporary workforce and replaced it with some of the slack that you had in the system because of this downturn. What would, uh, you know, how would you kind of look at, you know, talent and building up the bench as demand returns, would it mean that some of that temporary workforce comes back, or do you think that uh, you have enough, you know, uh, slack in the system still? Because utilization, as you said, has gone up a bit. So does that mean that you will have to then increase hiring as demand comes up? How should we think about this equation? So, uh, so we have uh, right now sufficient uh, availability of talent uh, uh, in 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 the company. Uh, having said that, uh, you know, uh, right now, you know, as, the, as as we always say that we will hire uh, hire for for revenue. So, if there is a need to hire externally, we will definitely look at it. But uh, uh, the the action that we took was was a was a was a very straightforward, um, I would say, uh, straightforward uh, matter of fact action. That uh, when we when we so the reduction in some of our revenues, some of our own employees became available for work. And if we had a skill set which was available, which, which we could service our customers, we did not need the cost of the variable workforce. And therefore, we, we sort of reduced that variable workforce and put our own employees to service those requirements. And uh, if it goes up, then we have all the channels available for us to uh, utilize it. Saurabh, you want to add anything to that? Yeah, just to add, one is that, you know, in the, some of the geographies, uh, the developed markets, we have been able to put some employee on furlough. And uh, that's helping from a cost perspective. But uh, our talent available for us, and as and when demand comes, we can quickly get them back without hiring anybody. So it's a win-win for the employee, for the company, of not going and hiring people when the demand comes back or you know, gearing ourselves for that. And the other one is also about crowdsourcing and the top gear platform and how we utilize that. Uh, that's another advantage we are seeing a lot of traction on top gear. Uh, in the quarter, we have seen a large demand on that one. These two would be other drivers in terms of looking at uh, when demand comes back. Thank you and all the best. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will take our last question now, which is from the line of Mr. Girish Pai from Nirmal Bang. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just want to discuss the trajectory of recovery. Uh, you had your uh, best quarter recently in TQ of FI 20, about uh, just a little less than 2.1 billion. Uh, by when do you think you will get back to that number, Jitin? Uh, that's question number one. Second question is regarding pricing. Uh, do you see that the worst on the pricing front is behind us uh, in 1Q, or do you see that kind of coming back again in the succeeding quarters? Yeah, hi, Girish. Hope you're well. Uh, we, um, so, so I think it will be too early for us to to call uh, when when we'll come back to a particular number, as uh, Theory mentioned in his opening remarks and in subsequent questions that. We really need to uh, find stability 
uh, but but you know our our endeavor would be to reach there as early as possible i mean the, the focus would be on growth and focus would be on investment and uh, and uh, focused effort to to get that growth back so not able to quantify that uh, timeline girish uh, and your second question was sir the pricing uh, do you see that it's kind yeah, of sure. uh, we've seen the worst of that or do you see that kind of coming because customer too much of time to think about their spending plans now that they kind of coming back to office and decide on budgeting going forward uh, do you think uh, you will actually see more pricing pressure going forward uh, participants we are request to please stay connected we have lost the line from mr dalal Please. Okay, we have the line now reconnected. So you may proceed. Yeah. So, so Giri, I was just saying that uh, you know we have worked very closely with our customer, and I would look at pricing more as a realization uh, for us. And as I had shared earlier in uh, in our uh, another discussion, that some of the realization which has got impacted uh, should start returning. Uh, yes, pricing. uh will remain a theme in a tough year but our endeavor has always been uh to work with our customer to reduce the total cost of ownership for our customer and not necessarily um uh, make it a you know a win lose uh, equation but really work towards a win win for customer as, as well as for us thank you thank you very much ladies and gentlemen that was our last question for today i now hand the conference over to ms ayer for closing remarks over to you ma'am thank you all for joining the call in case you could not take any of your questions please feel free to reach out to the investor relations team have a nice day